Kakados Boketov, we're continuing with Alachot of uh, koshering or koshering the utensils for Pesach. So if you remember yesterday, we mentioned that anything which was cooked with water, so therefore you need Hagalah, anything which was done without water needs Libun. So for example, skewers on a barbecue or a barbecue, they write the oven, all these things you need Libun. Now, what is the difference to Libun and Hagalah? Hagalah, we just mentioned, you take another pot, you put water, you boil, and when it's bubbling, you're going to put it inside, then when you take it out, you rinse it out. To do the Libun, right, there's going to be a difference, right, between what's something which is called Libun Hamur and Libun Kal. Libun Kal is where Kash is going to be burnt, which means that if you have straw, right, on the other side, it would get burnt. Libun Hamur, it has to be until Nitzotot Nitzazimimen, which means that you need that sparks will come out, right, because it's going to become red hot, and then it's going to be coming sparks coming out of the utensil. Now what happens is like this, any time where you need Hagalah, if you do Libun Kal, it helps. So for example, sometimes it happens that you're kashering, whether it's going to be a hotel or something, and I've got a set of cutlery. Now instead of coming and doing Hagalah, right, one by one, or even putting it in a big thing and moving it around and doing it, what you could do is you could set up the cutlery and you do Libun Kal. What do you do? You take the blowtorch and you go through it, right? And that's called Libun Kal. But when you need Libun Hamur, you need Nitzotzot Nitazimi Menu. You need that sparks are coming out. Nowadays though, you won't see that. Which means that if you take something, right, and you're going to come and start making it red hot, but you're not going to come and start seeing sparks coming out. So basically, Chachamim come and they say as follows. This is based upon Ramosha Feinstein, right, and Rav brings it down in Kitzush of, uh, of on the Basav HaChalav, and he says as follows. He says, in the olden days, the metal was not so condensed. Since it wasn't so condensed, when you come and you're going to make something red hot, but with the blowtorch, what happens is, is that all the food which was inside starts coming out. And that's why you have these sparks which are coming out. Nowadays, the metal is so condensed together, you will, not, you will not have sparks coming out of the utensil. So therefore, what happens is, is that all you need to do is that what it was going to be a shiur, that it was going to be red hot. How much is that? So there's two different opinions, whether it's going to be 375 degrees or 400 degrees, but that's Celsius, not Fahrenheit. Okay, now here, remember that here, usually the majority of the ovens are 350, 370, even 400, it's Fahrenheit. Here we're talking about Celsius, which is actually going to be uh, much more. Okay, so therefore, that is considered Libun Hamur. So therefore, if you're going to come and you're going to have a utensil, which gets to that amount of heat, so therefore, it's going to be permitted once you do the Libun Hamur. Another difference between Libun Hamur and Hagalah is like this. Hagalah, you have to wait 24 hours before, Plus, or we said you put the soap and then you're giving it a ten tam gum, you're giving it a negative taste. And then afterwards you rinse it out in cold water. Libun Hamur, you don't need to do that. Why is it that Libun Hamur, you don't need to wait the 24 hours? The reason why is very simple. Hagalah, what does it do? Hagalah, it takes out the Yisur just like it went in. It went in with water into the utensil. I come and with water, I'm taking it out of it. So therefore, now when I take it out, maybe it could still get absorbed. What Libun does is that you're not taking out the Yisur. You're burning the Yisur bin Komo. You're burning the, the Yisur where it is. Since you're burning the Yisur where it is, you don't need to wait for 24 hours and it's never going to come and be all said again. Meaning that you don't have to rinse a utensil after Libun Hamur. The opposite. If you're going to come and take something that you just did Libun and you're going to put it in cold water afterwards, it's going to be uh, very problematic, right? It's dangerous, right? But you're not, you don't need to. Why? Because you burn the Yisur bim komo. Okay, the last halakha that we're going to mention today is to do with countertops. There's a special halakha which is brought down by countertops, which is rov tashmisho. Rov tashmisho means that when I want to come and I want to kosher something, so I have to kosher it according to the majority of its usage. If the majority of usage is going to be cold, so then all I need to do is cold. The majority of usage is going to be in hot, so therefore I need to do it in hot. Countertops, the majority of usage is in cold. Okay, and therefore, since the majority of countertops, you use it in cold, so therefore, technically, you don't even have to castrate it whatsoever. All you have to do is you have to clean it well, and that's it. Still, many people are still machminim that we come and we pour boiling hot water over the countertops, and then we're okay, or if we cover it, so then it's also going to be okay. But in any circumstances, since we go by the majority of its usage, and therefore the majority of usage is going to be in cold, because if it's something hot, you will always put something underneath it, 
right, in order that it doesn't, whether it's burn or destroy the countertop, so therefore you don't really need to kosher it. If you do kosher it, so it's either you're going to put the boiling hot water and then you don't need to cover, cover it, or the office of vice versa, you would cover it, you don't need to put the boiling hot water. Some people would try to be machni like both, just in case the covering will tear, even though it's better always to use, instead of foil, right, it's better always to use, let's say, this type of a, a plastic, like a sticker or whatever it is that you're putting on top, that afterwards you just peel it off and that's it, but as many times that doesn't break, and therefore you're able to do it on the entire counters and everything like that, and there won't be any problem whatsoever.